It's part two of our deep dive into the Biden crime family on the corruption that leads from Hunter Biden to Joe Biden and even to big tech. It's Verdict with Senator Ted Cruz. Welcome to Washington, D.C., part two of our deep dive uh, into the Biden crime family and the investigation. Senator, as always, great to be with you here in D.C. with our special guest, Congressman Jim Jordan. And uh, I want to remind people, we did part one that came out on Wednesday morning with some very big breaking news in that. If you missed it, go back and listen to it. Uh, It's an important show. Well, Wednesday's show and today's show are designed to really be a resource if you're wondering, all right, what's going on with with all of this scandal? And listen, it's hard. It, you're busy. You're working. You know, mm-hmm. you turn on the TV. You hear a sound bite here or there, but but you may not understand what all is going on. And and the great thing about a podcast, I have to admit, you know, having done this now for several years, what I lo- like about the format is we can have an actual conversation. Yeah. You're not rushed. Um, yeah. And and get into real details. And and so this is this is part two. And, and part two, we're going to start with, look, look, one of the things your chairman in the House of the House Judiciary Committee, but also the subcommittee on the weaponization of the federal government. And, and, and let's start with, um, you know, as you know, the last book I wrote was Justice Corrupted, how, how, how the left has weaponized our mm-hmm. legal system. Mm-hmm. And uh, tell us, what is the focus of the subcommittee and what does it mean weaponizing the federal government? The agencies have been turned on, on, on the American people, the people they're supposed to serve. So instead of serving the, the taxpayer, the people who pay their salaries, who pay for our government, I think they've been, it's been turned against, um, turned against Americans for political reasons. And I would actually go back to remember about a year ago, uh, I guess it's a little less than a year ago, when, when Joe Biden stood in front of Independence Hall and called half the country fascist. Yeah. Remember, he, he was Bathed raving, in red light. Oh, he looked a, like Emperor Palpatine it from, was, from Star Wars. It was kind of crazy, kind of creepy. And, and, but he, I agree he said with everything you said except yeah, for the word kind of. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was it was bad, and so now you you think about we feel like some of these agencies are focused just with that mindset. I'll give you a great example. Uh, this happened in the in the field office, uh, the Richmond field office of the of the FBI. They put together this memorandum. They call it in the FBI. They call it a, a domain perspective. And we've actually seen it, the, the one that's, you know, very few redactions. The first one that came out had a lot of redactions, but the one with very few redactions. And this was the radical traditional Catholic memorandum. And you read through this. They were talking about developing sources inside the parish, informants inside the church. I mean, the, the idea that like someone, and this was signed off on by five people at the, at the Richmond field office, including the chief division counsel. So some lawyer who went to law school and probably should have had a course on the Constitution if they didn't, someone taught him about the First Amendment, the Bill of Rights, and yet they signed off on this. And when and, you re- and they're talking about sending spies into Catholic yes. churches and and trying to recruit priests it, to, uh, it to was, be informants for the FBI now on the, their flock. Yeah, they, right, right. They actually, think about and, and, and you know, confessional. Like what what's going? I mean, this is crazy. What? So now, thank goodness. All right, on this point, and I, I want to keep on the deep dive, but I do have to tell you one of my favorite stories. Okay. So Justice Antonin Scalia, one of the greatest justices yeah. ever to serve on the court, when Justice Scalia is nominated to the D.C. Circuit, uh, the FBI, anytime you get nominated to be a judge, the FBI does a background check. And Scalia gets a call from his childhood priest. And the priest says, Nino, FBI called asking questions about you but don't you worry i didn't tell him nothing <laughs> <laughs> that's a true story really and that's a great priest that's awesome that is that's, that's, a, that's, that's a, the answer you that's want you're yes. yeah. that's that's I you mean, don't that's, switch after that yeah, <laughs> you that, stick with him ride or die to the very end <laughs> but well, scalia loved telling that story. yeah that's a great story so um this memorandum this domain perspective talks about the you know sources inside in the, in the parish inside the church but what troubled me is when you read through it, what they really were defining as a radical traditional Catholic, they had a footnote about the Dobbs decision. Yeah. They said that the extremists and radical traditional Catholics may find common ground. I forget how the sentence exactly went, but it was something to the effect on, on abortion, on, on marriage, 
it was basically if you're and, and the Latin Mass. If yeah, if, if you if you attended the yeah. Latin Mass, if you're a pro-life, pro-family Catholic, you're radical. And it was funny because when this sort of came out a couple months ago, I happened to be doing Sean Duffy's show because he's on, on Fox yeah. Business, and Sean was asking me about it, and I said, Sean, when you read through this and kind of read between the lines, it's like I thought of you and Rachel's family because they got they got like. 30 kids, you yeah. know, and they're pro-life, oh, yeah. pro-family. They're, they're wonderful. Great people. Sean was a great member. And it's like, that, they're defining them yep. as radical. Yep. That's like, that's how Traditional that Traditional values are now radical values in the eyes of the government. Yeah, and, and the Catholic Church. If, if you, and actually, I, I would say more broadly that, that they define it as anyone who's serious about their faith. That, that, that makes you inherently suspect. And that is so contrary to the First Amendment. Yep. It's like, and, and you know, the, the FBI pulled this back. But would they have pulled it back but for a whistleblower who came and told us? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'd like to think they would. Well, it's the same but, way that going after parents and, mm-hmm. and categorizing point. parents as, same thing. as you're, you, you are a domestic thing. terrorist. If you show up at your kid's <laughs> school board and you get angry at what they're doing with your yep. kids. Well, and, and Jim broke the story about how the FBI is currently using a threat tag. Uh, so, look, we've discussed at great length how Merrick Garland, one of the first things he did was directed the FBI to go after and target parents who dare speak up at school boards and, and to treat them. This was in response to the National Association of School Boards yep. that asked that parents be treated as domestic terrorists under the Patriot Act. And within five or six days, Merrick Garland snaps to attention, issues the, the memorandum. It becomes public. National Association yep. of School Board apologizes for it. But after Merrick, the hearing. Yep. But Merrick Garland doesn't back down at all. Still and, in- and, and then what you broke is they're still doing it. That, that memorandum's still in place. The memorandum from Richmond has been rescinded, thank yes. goodness. Go go back to the school board thing. Though. It's it been you, you and the center bring this up. September 29th, 2021, the, the School Board Association, a left-wing political group, puts out the memorandum, use the Patriot Act against moms and dads. Five days later, October 4th, the Attorney General of the United States issues a memorandum doing exactly what the School Board Association asked. And then two weeks later, on October 20th, October 20th, 16 days later, on October 20th. By the way, let me ask you something. You're the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Does the Biden DOJ respond to you in five days? That, 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 that's, a, that's a great point. No. they don't no. respond to the Senate no. Judiciary Committee. No, they don't. Um, but think about it. On October 20th is when the threat tag and an email gets sent out to FBI agents all across the country, all the field offices. So I always tell people, so from September 29th to October 20th, 22 days to your point. When have you ever seen the federal government move that fast? Yeah. Never. But when it came to well, going well, after Well, they their... did find the leaker of the Dobbs decision, right? Well, yes, and, 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 and record time, too. right? Record yeah, time. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's another issue, though. But you talk about weaponization? That, that, is, that is like turning... Um, when, when you think that the Justice Department didn't prosecute any of these people who were protested at, at justices' homes, the attack on the court... Yep. All designed, I think, to intimidate the court on yep. that particular decision yep. and set the stage for what they really want to do, which is pack the court. Well, weaponization You've is, talked about this and wrote about yeah. this. We- weaponization is twofold. It is both using the machinery of government as a weapon to attack your enemies, but it's also declining to give the protection of law Good to point. people you disagree with. Well and, said. And and so well said. and and look, this is something the George Soros prosecutors understand. We have DAs who come in, and and they realize you can abolish the police by shutting the police down, or you can abolish the police by putting a DA in who won't prosecute violent criminals. Either one does the same thing. We won't, we won't thing. prosecute the, the the folks that the the good police officers go out. All those good cops on the street who go out and arrest won't prosecute them. No, you're exactly and, right. And Merrick Garland's doing the same thing. It is a federal crime, unequivocal, on on the statute books that you cannot pro- protest at a justice's home. They've done so night after night after night, and DOJ has not prosecuted a single person. They directed the marshals not to arrest them, Yep. directly contrary to law. And and Merrick Garland, when asked, I've asked him at, at great length. I saw that. He just, he, I saw it. He won't, 18 he, he U- doesn't like that law. 18 U.S.C. Section 1507. And you know you can you can raise concerns about okay what does is that is that law got some First Amendment problems? It's the law, and it was 
and they were and doing. By the way, people firebombing pregnancy uh, crisis pregnancy centers. They they don't prosecute that either. They've got the resources. Hundreds to send people undercover into Catholic churches. Yeah. Remember? remember that line? Yeah, yeah, it's hard to find people at night yeah. when they commit crimes. That's why they can't get them. But it was hundreds of churches. It, 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 it's, it's convenient most criminals yeah. commit their crimes during the yeah. day because yeah. really this DOJ can't be bothered to turn the lights on. Hundreds of churches and crisis pregnancy centers yeah. have been attacked in the in the aftermath of the leak, and I, and as you pointed out earlier, Senator, we still we still don't know, you know. Who the who the leaker was, but we what we I think we can logically figure out what the motive was. Yeah. The motive was to intimidate the court and get him to change that decision. There's a lot of Americans that are gonna I know think, is there going to be any accountability for abuse of power? And I want to go back to the That's investigation with Hunter Biden and the Biden family. Let's talk about how many Bidens are involved. And I understand that people say, well, you got to make a living. I've heard people say that. you got to make a living. But the reality is to make as much money they're having coming in, and let's talk about where the money's coming from. You know a lot about that money, and I think we should do a really deep dive into where the cash is coming from. Before we get to that, I want to tell you about our friends at Patriot Mobile, the only conservative cell phone company in the country. If you've got a cell phone and you're paying a bill right now, stop giving it to big tech, people that are fighting against your values, and give it to a company that fights for what we believe in. Not only can you keep your same cell phone number, but you're actually, every time you pay your bill, a portion of that bill is going to support and protect First and Second Amendment rights, the rights of unborn children, helping with adoptions, helping with parents who are trying to have a say in their kids' future in the public schools. This is what Patriot Money is doing, Patriot Mobile is doing with your money when you pay your bill. So make the switch and make a difference on something you're going to pay for every month anyway. 878-PATRIOT, use the promo code VERDICT. You'll get free activation, the best deals of the year. 878-PATRIOT, that's 878-PATRIOT or patriotmobile.com slash VERDICT. Make the switch today, 878-PATRIOT. Well, let's talk about these suspicious activity reports because for people that don't know what that is, banks can flag things. They can flag things they think are suspicious. Yep. And there's a hell of a lot of them connected to the last name Biden. Why are there so many first off? And is it because so much of the money is coming in from places that are shady? Or is it because they know who the money's coming from and they've already said this is a bad actor? Well, I think it's probably all of the above. We're, we're, we're trying to put all those pieces together. But, it, it, you know, it's Ukraine, it's China, it's Russia. Not, not, not exactly the, the, the countries that you... Uh, jump to the to the top of the list that are you know reputable kind of places where you're going to be doing business. So I, I think you know what was it the mayor of Moscow's wife gave hundred I forget that one but it was a ton of was several million, million yeah yeah million like, million plus you can just bucks. go on and on. It, 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 so there's there's a number of these places where it's coming from. I think complexity, you know, twenty some LLCs that are set up that with the Biden family and their partners, uh, this this Robinson Walker guy and these others. When you got that many LLCs, companies you're setting up, I think complexity was the was the objective, and it was designed to. It seems to me. Well, let me ask you a law, law, the law enforcement question. Um, when you have crooks, when you have drug cartels, when you have the mafia, why do they create all sorts of shell corporations to move the money? Yep. No, I I, I know because it's, it's probably because it's money laundering. But so we don't know if that's the same thing going on here. But it all starts to look suspicious. Again, we I think we. We talked about that in our, in, our, in our last one, but, you know, there aren't just one or two suspicious activity reports. There's 170 some. And it's not just one or two LLCs. It's not like one company, one entity they set up and receives money and they're doing real work, real business, real, real, real value, real, real service. That's not the case. There's 20 some of these LLCs and they're getting money from all these countries that have got kind of shady concerns there. Um, and it's literally millions of dollars. So... And, 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 you know, it's it's an amazing thing. Look, there are people in politics who have family members who are lobbyists who say, OK, you know, you've got a Democrat who's got a family member who goes and works with a big labor union, goes and works with a teacher's union. That that stuff is shady, but not generally illegal. Um, it really says something when when. The son of the vice president decides his business model is not just t to go get a bunch of Democrat clients to hire him uh, to influence dad, but, but go to foreign nations, communist China, Russia, and Ukraine. 
I mean, that's quite the collection. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's you know, uh, you know, you kind of wonder where like Libya and Iran and North Korea yeah, are. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it. There's 170. You may be in luck. I, yeah. Well, I, I have no evidence of that, so <laughs> yeah. I'm not suggesting yeah. that. Yeah. But it really is. Well, well, remember when Ukraine was, I think, on the list of corrupt countries was like maybe number one. Is like right near the top. So yeah. just that in and of itself, and Russia is certainly corrupt kind of kind of uh, place for business as well. So, yeah, those are those are right near the top of the list, and this is where Hunter Biden's getting uh, getting a lot of money. How much are you concerned about the fact that apparently the money that was coming in from the Russians is coming in from individuals that still not been named? Uh, as those that are being sanctioned by our government. A new round of sanctions came out a few weeks ago. Not on that list hmm. are the people that gave Hunter Biden, the Biden family, millions of dollars, literally. Yeah. I mean, we'll have to, we'll have to see, but, um, you know, I'm at the, I'm at the point now, there's not a whole lot that surprised me. One of the things I've learned in, in over, over time is you've been involved in none of these investigations, whether we go clear back I think it was 10 years ago this week when we first learned about Lois Lerner and the IRS targeting, yeah. you know, conservatives when you were running for yeah. for, for, for office. Um, so the one thing I always learn is when you get in these investigations, the, the, the one thing we always get wrong is it's always worse than we thought. And that may, may, maybe that the Biden's- Is this worse than you thought? I mean, well, it, it may not be with Biden's. I don't know yet because we haven't completed the investigation, but every other one, that's always been the case. And remember when Lois Lerner who was a senior official at the Department of Justice. She was targeting conservatives. She was targeting Tea Party groups. She was targeting pro-Israel groups. She was targeting pro-life groups. She was targeting groups that included in their title anything about the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. That was suspect. Patriot. It said, if yeah, you, if yeah. you believed said in the Patri Bill of Rights. Yeah, scary. That scary. that was... Yeah. And you remember when the news broke? The news broke because the Department of Treasury Inspector General yep. reported on it. It sure did. And Barack Obama went and did a press conference and he said, quote, I am angry and the American people have a right to be angry. Now, that that was actually it's good. The second half of it was right. The first half of it was a lie. And it was a lie because he wasn't angry. He was angry, he got caught. But if he was angry, he wouldn't have done what he did after that, which is stonewall and stonewall yes. and stonewall and refute. And ha when Lois Lerner pleads the fifth and refuses to testify and is held in contempt of Cong Congress, you know what? His Department of Justice didn't prosecute her. Right. And uh, I believe he said later on that he didn't think anyone did anything wrong. And it's like, there's a pending investigation. You can't have the, you can't have the head of the executive branch saying, you know, nothing judging happened. the outcome and that there's nothing wrong here. So um, what she did was just targeting conservative groups, applying for tax exempt status and having this be on the lookout uh, list of, of, of people applying for the reasons you, you stated. So well, wrong. and that was the model for what's happened under Biden. And by the way, in between Obama and Biden, you had the Trump administration. And amazingly enough, the federal government was weaponized against him, the <laughs> sitting president. <laughs> um, you know, Ben asked a minute ago about accountability. What, what accountability has there been for the DOJ and FBI officials involved in Crossfire Hurricane? I know. I know it's... Other than Klein Smith, who, who falsified a document in front of the FISA court, no one's had anything. And this is, it's probably the question I get more than any other. I'm sure you get the same way when you're out and about talking with folks around the country. Um, and, and by the way, let's pause on, on Klein Smith because we've lived this for a while, but not everyone listening to this. So Klein Smith was an assistant general counsel mm -hmm. at the FBI who fraudulently created a counterfeit document and submitted it yeah. to a federal court. And, and in particular, what the, the, the counterfeit document was is, is, is they wanted to get a, a wiretap on, on Carter Page, yep. who was one of the foreign policy advisors invi uh, advising the Trump campaign. This is in 2016. And the basis for this wiretap is Carter Page was talking to some shady Russians. And so the FBI, doing actually its job, reached out and emailed the CIA and said, hey, is this guy a source? Is he an asset for you? Because if you're talking to shady Russians, that's pretty suspicious. But um, if you're doing it on behalf of your country, yeah, the United States of America, yeah. thank you, it's not suspicious. Yeah, right. it's not suspicious. Yeah, and, yeah like it, it's yeah. a good thing. Is he our guy? Is right. he one right. of us? Is he a friendly? And so Klein Smith emails the CIA, says, is he a source for you? CIA emails back, yes, he is. He is a source. And Klein Smith takes that email. I know. 
and he fraudulently alters it and he changes is a source to is not a source. 180 degrees. So how many days has he been in jail for this? Zero. Not a day. That's not a day. Yeah. That's and that's the and part that was where... submitted to a federal court. And I guarantee, if any of us created a fraudulent document and submitted it to a federal court, you'd do real jail. jail and, time. and the thing that always sticks out to me is a 180 degree change in the meaning. Is to is not. It's just like you can't change it more. They did that. So I but, still go back to that campaign. I remember how they said Donald Trump was insane because he said they they were spying on my campaign. And they said no right. one was. Obama said that no one was spying on his campaign. It's ludicrous. They were. That sounds like something 51 intelligence officials would do. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, just get them to sign a letter. Now it's all good. Yeah. Well, you know, look, crossfire hurricane, part of the reason it happened is nobody believed Trump would be president, so they'd never been caught. If yeah. Hillary had won, this would have all faded into Remind darkness. me of Crossfire Hurricane, just so they understand that exactly. So Crossfire Hurricane was the, the, name. the, the name given to the effort to target yeah. the person who was then the Republican nominee to be president. Bingo. Right. And it was the deep state engaged in war. And it, it was the same weaponization that had begun under Obama. And actually Crossfire Hurricane began under Obama. And then it waged on uh, under Trump and actually July 5th, uh, 2017, there was a meeting in the Oval Office with Barack Obama, with Joe Biden, with Jim Comey, who was the head of the FBI, yep. with James, uh, James Clapper, and they decided, we're going to keep this going. Yep. A and we're going to target the president. At that point, they knew Trump was coming in. He was 15 days away from being sworn yeah. in. And they said, keep it going. And keep they it. made a decision. And by the way, that's where Joe Biden suggested in that meeting going after Michael Flynn, the incoming national security advisor, under the Logan Act, which the Logan Act it, 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 three it, times in history has been enforced. Yeah. So bad. It, it makes it a crime essentially for a private citizen to engage in diplomacy yeah. with foreign countries. It's, it, and it John is, Kerry's done that a lot. <laughs> daily. Exactly. Yeah. But it's also when they decided to go up to Trump Tower, President-elect Trump, January 5th yes. of 2017. So he's president-elect. They go up there and Comey briefs him on the dossier that they already knew was false. And Comey briefs him on it. And I'm convinced the only reason and Comey- And been paid for by the Hillary Clinton campaign. Right. And the only reason he briefs him on it is so that they can leak it. Yep. So that they can tell, so that they can say, it was so important, Jim Comey went to New York to brief President-elect Trump on the dossier. That then leaks, they print the, do it's, that's when it all got rolling. That led to, ultimately led to the special counsel after Trump fires Comey and they get the, the special counsel. It's also interesting, you mentioned Crossfire Hurricane. I always think this is funny. Because remember the Hillary Clinton email, uh, that investigation was called the mid-year exam. Yeah. You know, very boring and plain. But going into President Trump was like crossfire. Hurt. Like Hurricane. you can see him pounding their chest yeah. like we're going to get. So like even the names they give these things kind of indicate the bias that exists there with uh, with folks in the government. You, you've seen a lot um, in investigations. What has shocked you the most by your investigation? How the Biden family has exploded, the money that's come in, the players, the suspicious activity reports, what is the moment when you're going through this that really even took you ba aback saying, wow, I can't believe that I'm even seeing this, reading this, looking at this, even having to contemplate the possibility of X. And before you answer that, I wanna tell you about our friends at Augusta Precious Metals. You can protect your retirement in this crazy economy with a gold IRA. And I trust my friends at Augusta Precious Metals they can help you protect your hard-earned dollars in this crazy economy. We've seen the bank failures. We've seen bank takeovers recently. And if you're in retirement or close to retirement, you know there is no time to make up losses. That is where gold can help you protect your hard-earned dollars. Talk to one of the experts at Augusta Precious Metals. Not only do they sit down with you one-on-one, -on -one, but they'll send you your free guide on gold so you can understand what gold can do for you and how it can help you. Call them, 877, the number four, gold IRA. That's 
the number four, Gold IRA, or online at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Call them, use the promo code VERDICT, you'll get that free gold guide, AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Congressman, you've seen a lot. What shocked you the most? I think one of the things that, and I've touched on a little bit before, but Yoel Roth says in his sworn declaration that repeatedly in the month of October 2020, we had agencies telling us, FBI and other agencies telling us to expect a Hunter Biden laptop hack and leak. There's going to be a, there's going to be a hack and leak operation that will happen in October of 2020, and it will involve Hunter Biden. And we were repeatedly told that by various government agencies. And, and the FBI was in possession of Hunter's laptop. They already the had the laptop. So they're being repeatedly told what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, who it's going to involve. What's going to happen, hack and leak, when it's going to happen October 2020, just weeks before the most important election we have, and who it's going to involve, Hunter Biden. And you step back and you say, how in the freak did they know? And of course they knew because what Senator just said, they had the laptop. So that's when it, to me like, oh my goodness, they had the laptop, they expected it to get public. Now, we all know there's an October surprise. We get one every four years, right? Right. So that doesn't surprise us. But when you can name exactly what the October surprise is going to be, that's like I, I said when I first, I thought, were these guys clairvoyant? How did they know? How did they, they were prophets. You know, they could figure it out. Like, no, they had the doc, they had the uh, the laptop. So that's and, when and it all of a sudden hit me no like, you interest, gotta be kidding me. No interest in verifying its authenticity, at least that we know of. They had no interest in investigating the evidence of corruption within the laptop, that, that, that they were perfectly happy to keep it utterly dormant. That was 2019, December 2019, they got possession of the laptop. <clears throat> we're sitting here in 2023. And yeah. there still hasn't been a prosecution well, none, brought. None, but, but a great and point. And finally, Hunter's admitted it's his laptop in terms of trying to fight against this. But, his but, lawyer. Not, but not in Arkansas. Yeah. Not yeah. in Arkansas. Yeah. He, <laughs> That's remember, true. He, he, he backpedaled, which is going to, I think, get him in a lot of trouble. If you notice that when he was down there, his attorney's like, we're not even saying this is real. It's like, well, hold on. You said it somewhere else it was yeah. real. But for the but but not no, no, it's not real because I don't want you to see where my money is because I don't want to have to pay for this kit. So the, the short answer is we don't know what the FBI did with the laptop. We don't know if they validated it. We don't know if they looked at it. They don't, yep. We don't know if we did, they confirmed it. They don't, we, we, we don't know. We know they haven't prosecuted anyone. Right. But we do know they were telling big tech to be on the lookout for those specific things, which suggest they, they probably did know or they probably did some of this. Maybe they didn't. But they is were there sure any predicting scenario it. that you guys, either of you, and I'm asking this because this is the fun part about doing the podcast. Is there any scenario in your mind? You've been in Washington a long time. You worked over at the Supreme Court. You've had a career, law enforcement, you know, where they, if you get a laptop of the FBI that you think is a former vice president's son's that has damning information on it, is there any chance you just shelve it? Or wouldn't you just out of pure curiosity be like, we need to go through this to know what's out there? If you're real law enforcement, of course you would. Yeah, I, but, but, but even but if, if you're, you're just a TMZ if, type person. If you're a hardcore partisan who hates Donald Trump, this is the same entity that not long after decided to go undercover targeting the Republican nominee for president. That's an extraordinary situation. Look, I, I'm an alumnus of the Department of Justice. I was an associate deputy attorney general under, under George W. Bush. I, look, you might have a situation where the evidence was so compelling you had to investigate the nominee for the other party, but that threshold should be really damn high. Now, not so high that you get a laptop full of incriminating information that he... he is getting the big guy is getting 10 percent from communist china all right now you're starting to hit a threshold of we got to figure out if this is real but the fbi and doj what i think happened is hardcore partisans burrowed into senior career positions mm -hmm. and were comfortable treating the machinery of law enforcement as a tool to protect their friends and attack their enemies. Do you agree with that? Well, I also think it's 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 one thing if they get that laptop in October 2020. Yeah, right? that, that'd be because, a different story. Because there's, there's a there, you know you you work there, so you know there's a window of time where you're sort of like okay, we're getting in that that really critical political time when America's deciding who's going to 
do we really want to impact the election with information we, we bring out? So that's one thing. But this was 10 months before that. And, and by the way, it's December D- DOJ, right before the 2022 election, had information classified about documents. Joe Biden's classified yeah. documents, and they did nothing with it. They didn't leak it. They kept it secret. But 91 days before that election, they did raid President Trump's home. So outside that 90-day window, I guess 91 days, you raid You're President Trump's home. But you find something within a month or so. I guess it was a couple of weeks it before the election. A week, week, and a week before the election, uh, they don't do anything. So, but but with the with the laptop, it's ten months. It's ten months before the election. Yep. I think you probably check it out, but who knows what they did. So one of the things that that I think is striking, and you mentioned it before, is the interrelation between the federal government and big tech and the media. Because they're all intertwined in a way that, frankly, is, is, is not natural. The media ought to be a watchdog. They, they, they ought to be, you know, the phrase that, that back when we had journalists that they used to be proud of is, is, is shining a light and, and, and holding those in power accountable. Yeah. But... What is really stunning that we've seen through your investigation, that we've seen through the Twitter files, is how willing big tech was to be the foot soldiers for the government and how willing the media was. Weekly meetings. To to, to be the foot soldiers for the government. You look at the Hunter Biden, not only did big tech suppress the story, but they punished the media and deplatformed the New York Post. Sure so, so, so it was one after the other after the other. They vis- of- the visibility filtered anyone who was trying to, to, to talk about the story, share the story, link to the story. They did the, the visibility filtering is the fancy word big tech uses. Now, is that a normal thing for big tech to be acting at the behest of the, of, of the so federal government, silencing people the federal government doesn't like? Yeah, it's censor, uh, what, what uh, Jonathan Turley... Uh, censorship by surrogate is what um, Professor Turley called it. So there's a template now, and it's scary because I actually think this is the biggest threat we face. We can recover from the crazy border policies, the crazy tax policies, spending policies, crime policies, energy policies. We can recover from all that. But if they if they destroy the First Amendment, you no longer have this this amazing thing we call America, the greatest country ever. So that's that's what can, and the template is always you will get the left will tell a lie. The big media will report the lie. Big tech will amplify the lie. And then if you try to tell the truth, they call you a racist. They call you names. They try to cancel you. And it's like, what? what? That's, that's now what, what's happened to our country and to debate and to the First Amendment. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not supposed to work that way. And it's, it's why I really think what we're trying to do relative to the First Amendment, protect it, highlight where it's been abused, um, is so important. And, and, and look at getting the facts out there, doing the oversight to get the facts out there, then looking at legislative remedies. What, what's legislation that we could pass that would actually help with the situation? And then finally, do we have to look at the appropriations process yeah. and say some of these agencies shouldn't be getting the money they're getting, at least not in the same way they're getting it now? So talk to us about FBI whistleblowers. And, and you've had a lot of FBI whistleblowers yeah. come to your, your committee Uh, And by the way, I'll say, if we've got FBI agents, FBI employees, DOJ employees who want to blow the whistle, come to Jim, come to my office. Come see us. Um, You will have the protections of law afforded to whistleblowers, and it's an important part of constitutional accountability. But but talk to us about what you've seen from whistleblowers and, and what we can expect in the week, weeks and months ahead. We, we plan a hearing next week. Uh, that's, that's, we haven't got it officially scheduled yet, but that's what we're looking to do. We think we're going to have four of the whistleblowers come testify. We've had a couple dozen who've talked to us. Uh, we've interviewed half a dozen. Um, and as I mentioned, I think in, in the last, uh, last episode was a, a part one, I guess you call. Um, many of them have been retaliated against. And it's really sad because- What does that it, look like? So they people, take their step picture, take their security clearance. You lose Can you a, do your job without that? You can't. And then, and then, uh, without your security clearance, you're, you're you pretty much can't. And some of them just been forced to leave. We had one who was is trying to trying to get uh, to to uh, to to get his uh, firearms training records because he needs that for another job. And they slow walked him on that. And so it's just like it's just time and issue after issue that that we see with the, these these guys. Um, 
In and the FBI, you can't do your job without your security clearance. Got to have that. A lot of people outside of Washington may not realize that. Gotta That's like it. taking your driver's license away from you and you're a big rig driver. You can't make a living. Yep. Yep. It's really, really tough. And so uh, and it's, again, it's vindictive, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it, trying to crush you financially and ruin your life. It, it's it's and how career. dare you talk to Congress about what we're doing. Yeah. And, and it's also illegal. Yeah. No, it is. You, that, you can't the, retaliate against whistleblowers. The whistleblower statute is very clear. So, um, and like I said, one of one of these whistleblowers is the one who talked to us about the school board issue and what they're what they were trying to do to parents, uh, giving us the name of the the uh, the the education ed officials, the threat tag label that was put on the twenty some parents. Why, but we put our report on this. None of these parents were charged with anything. Only one went to a full investigation, and no one's been charged with anything. Many of these places. The, the, the U.S. attorney would get this memory and they, they, they do a little thing and they're like, this is baloney, this is ridiculous, yeah. why are we doing this? It was all done for politics because they thought it was going to help uh, Terry McAuliffe be the next governor of Virginia. And it turned out it backfired on them and helped Glenn Youngkin. When? Yep. Yeah. Because you start telling moms and dads, we think, remember Glenn Youngkin, or excuse me, when Terry McAuliffe said, we don't think parents should be telling schools what to teach? Yeah. And a bunch of moms said, I don't. I think we should. Yeah. You know, by the way, I know my kid's name. You don't know the kid's name. I think I should be involved. Sure. <laughs> so that issue. Um, so this is when the whistleblowers came to on the Catholic memo. That's one of them. The whistleblower came forward. Um, so I'll tell you, there was another FBI memo, which we've talked about in the Senate Judiciary Committee, where they identified signs of extremism. And they had all sorts of things, including the Gadsden flag oh, yeah. from the Revolutionary That's right. War time. That's right. But, but they also also had... The come and take it flag from Texas, which which uh, uh, I well your boots are terrorist boots because they have that flag. So <laughs> I, I, I wear well, those boots just about for, every day in the pride. Senate that, that that has the come and take it flag on the back. And and as you know, I pulled the boot off and slammed it on the on the bench and said, "Look, let me self report right now. I'm wearing two of these symbols." You might want to auction off right now. Just say <laughs> you're, not touching, game, right? you're not touching my boots. Stay away from my damn boots. <laughs> I just got for them charity. back. For so charity. So I, I haven't had them for six months. I just really? had them resold. So they're Lucchese. Oh, they're, they're beautiful. They're even Lucchese, better now. The Lucchese factory in El Paso, I had worn holes in them. So I had to send them to the factory. It takes like five months to resold them. They come back as brand new boots, oh, basically. that's cool. They do a that's really cool. nice job. That's awesome. I want to ask you one last question. And that deals with the issue, I think, of there's fatigue with a lot of Americans now. They hear you're doing investigations. They listen to part one, and if you missed it, go back and listen to it. Yeah. They listen to part two, Yeah. and they go, I'm mad as hell. I'm frustrated with my government. What does success look like? And I'm talking about from an accountability standpoint from your investigations, because they don't feel like there's accountability. They feel no, like the, 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 the deck is stacked against us now. They it's feel like we're always losing. And yep. I say this because I, I have listeners I talk to every day. They are sick and tired of feeling like there's two systems of justice yeah. and that there is two, there's a double standard and they feel like we never win. And, and their definition of winning, I want to be clear, is, is, is something they, they, they almost step over themselves over and over again trying to explain this to me. They say, Ben, I want you to understand, I'm not wanting to put people in jail because they're on the other side of the aisle. I just want there to be accountability for people when you do break laws. Yeah. And when they see the Biden crime family, they see what's going on, they see what's happening, the FBI and the DOJ in this letter, they just want to know they live in a world where there is laws that matter. Yeah. There is right and wrong. And what does success look like for you? And before you answer that, I want to lastly tell you about our friends at Chalk. If you're a guy and you're getting a little older and you feel like you're losing some of that strength and vitality that you're used to and you're sick and tired of that fatigue and weakness, you just feel tired. You don't feel like you have the same energy you used to have. That's where you need to check out Chalk. C-H-O-Q.com. They are here to help real men just like you boost your testosterone levels up to 20% over 90 days. Now, I've been taking the Chalk Male Vitality Stack. I can tell you it works. You're going to get your focus back. You're going get, to get rid of that fatigue, just feeling tired, part of just getting older. Testosterone levels have dropped off chart-wise in this country, and Chalk can help you get that back. Maximize your masculinity, boost those levels up to 20% over 90 days. Go online to Chalk, choq.com. That's choq.com. Use the promo code BEN. You'll get 35% off any Chalk subscriptions for life. Chalk, choq.com. Promo code BEN for 35% off. 
Congressman, uh, it, it's fatiguing. Yeah. yeah, no, it is. Uh, step one is stopping any bad behaviors, getting the facts on the table. We're committed to doing that. It's part of our constitutional duty when we when we do oversight. Success in the end is if we can if we can do it in a way that protects the first. We're going to pass some legislation out of the House. It'd be tough to get through the Senate. Uh, with the with the Democrats in control, uh, we're going to look at the appropriations process. Those are all things we got to do. But in the end, if we can if we can get respect back in this country for the First Amendment and stop the censorship that's going on, I tell folks I, I was talking earlier today to a group. You think about the last couple of years, every right we enjoy under the First Amendment has been assaulted. Yep. Right to practice your faith, right to assemble, petition the government, press speech. Everyone's been assaulted. There's there were places. During COVID, where Democrat governors and Democrat mayors wouldn't let people, Americans, yep. go to church on Sunday. I spoke now, to them. Now you could go to an Antifa riot or yeah. Black Lives Matter yeah. riot. Yeah, b- bash windows in every major urban area around this yeah. country. Um, with your right to assemble, I spoke to the New Mexico, I think I've told you this, Senator, the New Mexico Republican Party in Amarillo, Texas, because they had to go to Texas to get the freedom to assemble. This is two years ago. The freedom to assemble because their crazy Democrat governor wouldn't let them assemble in their own state. And you just go right down. But the most important liberty we have. They should have named it an Antifa rally. <laughs> and they could have had it. The, the, the most important right we have. Is, I, I, I've said that every church service should have just called themselves a protest against the devil. Yeah, there <laughs> we go. Um, but your right to speak is the most important. If you can't talk, you can't practice your faith, you can't share your faith, you don't have the freedom of press, freedom to petition, freedom to assemble, you just don't have it. And that's what they're coming after. And that's what we got to defend. And if we can protect that, That'll be a good well, day. and and tell folks about your investigation into the corrupt prosecution of Alvin Bragg targeting Donald Trump. Because when you talk about weaponization, we've talked at length in this podcast yeah. how utterly frivolous this case is. is. But but you've engaged very closely on it. So tell tell us what you're doing on that. Alvin Bragg used federal tax dollars to indict a former president for no crime, and then when we wanted to talk to one of the DAs who worked for him who had left over a year ago and wrote a book solely on this subject, he took us to court. And the federal judge just, uh, the court just gave us a decision a couple of weeks ago. It says, you're wrong, Mr. Bragg. The Judiciary Committee gets to have a deposition with Mr. Pomerantz. He'll be coming in this Friday for a And, and uh, what does he deposition. say in his book? He says, uh, oh, he talks about, it's, it's really interesting because you talk about the old line, uh, show me the man, I'll find you the crime. They have Tw- like 20 different things they were looking at President Trump. They looked at the 40 Wall Street property, the Seven Springs uh, Resort, the Jupiter Golf Course, his tax returns, his apartment that he that he, his, that he lived in on the top of Trump Tower, his his financial statements, his his all his uh, uh, stuff with Mazars. They looked at his kids. I mean, you just go down the list. And then, of course, they looked at the, the, uh, the uh, Stormy Daniels issue. Like, I mean, and I'm forgetting some. It's crazy all the things they looked at. To try to to try to, to get this guy, but we're going to ask him about um, we're going to ask him about things he said in the book. You know some of the some of the things in in, in there. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, it's amazing. You do that kind of deep dive. Almost anyone, if you have a team of prosecutors combing through everything you've ever filed with the IRS, my guess is most people can find, even something. find something. And especially a billionaire real estate developer. Yes. If, if you brought a hundred billionaire real estate developers, went through all their taxes. I'd be surprised if you could find one you couldn't indict for something. They looked at him. Uh, they were looking at when he bought the post office here and, and turned it into the to the, to the hotel here in, in D.C. I mean, and just on, it was it was ridiculous. So um, yeah, that that is happening. But um, again, I think it just shows you know the, the D.A. in Manhattan. I think the D.A. in Georgia is going to have another crazy and, case. And by the way, Alvin Bragg is a Soros D.A. George Soros spent yeah. over a million bucks to get him elected. This is this goes back to weaponization. Sure does. You want to talk about the power of putting your guy in control of law enforcement, whether they're targeting Donald Trump or targeting you as a mom or dad, it's the same principle, which is we will use the government to crush our enemies. I, I hope that everybody will take this episode, take the last one, Share it out on social media wherever you are. Thank you for spending some quality time with us. I think there's a lot of Americans that are going to really appreciate the fact that we just took a deep breath, went back and spent this time explaining it because it's so hard 
to get a concept of where we are if you're doing it in three or four minutes on TV. So thanks for taking the time and, and, and being here. It's been a fun thing. Make sure you share this podcast with your family and friends. Hit that uh, subscribe button. We do this show three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So make sure you do that. Also, write us a five-star review wherever you listen to your podcast. It helps us reach new people. And we'll see you back here in a couple of days.